I bought some 5x5 five five Baltic Birch and I have my current sawhorses and they have in them the Veritas platform saddles and then in those platform saddles I have 8 foot 2x4s so that gives me a foundation here to be able to do cutting. I then uh, put my 5x5 five five plywood on, on here and measured 30 inches in other words, 5 feet is 60 inches, so I measured 30 inches because my uh, two tops are both 30 inches by 60 inches and 30 inches by 48 inches for the smaller one. So anyway, when you cut the 5x5 five five in exactly in half, you get the two pieces that you need. Now, in the plans, I'm not sure you have 5x5 five five half inch uh, Baltic birch available to you, so I say in the plans to get a sheet of 4x8 Baltic birch half inch and then uh, you probably want to put them if you haven't built sawhorses yet, which you're now building uh, you probably want to put these down on the ground on some 2x4 so they're supported or what a lot of people do is they buy some hard foam I don't have a convenient place for hard foam I, uh, I have my corded powerful uh, circular saw here. I have a perfectly straight edge and then I cut it with my circular saw and this is like one quarter inch uh, MDF and then this is a piece of walnut and so that makes a 48 inch uh, circular saw track that I can follow for cross cutting. So anyway I have two different tracks that I built both of them designed specifically on one side for my corded powerful saw which I usually use when I'm doing breakdowns and then the other side is designed for my Ryobi cordless but it seemed to you know bog down and run out of power so I tend to use my corded saw. So anyway that's what I've done here. I now have my uh, my three-quarter inch Baltic birch which is 30 by 60 and then I have my half inch Baltic birch which is 30 by 60 and I'm going to laminate them together and then I have my 48 inch uh, three-quarter inch Baltic birch uh, 48 by 30 and then I have my 48 by 30 right here uh, half inch they're gonna all get uh, glued together and then tomorrow I will be putting grooves in them and uh, dog holes and that'll be a lot of fun okay okay here's what I got going on here this is just a little sound recording device since I don't have my lavalier on and my shogun or shotgun is way across the room on top of my camera so that won't pick up very well the first time i've used this we'll see how this works so here's what i've got i've got my 30 by 60 inch uh this is the uh, half inch baltic birch and i'm going to put glue on it and then i'm going to set my 30 by 60 three quarter inch baltic birch on top of that and get it all lined up and then add some clamps uh, kind of using the weight of the heavy one to uh, in, in lieu of a lot of clamps so I'm gonna basically laminate my two 30 by 60s together one of them's half inch one of them three quarter inch as you know they're plywood so they're actually both a little bit under that so when I'm done my top for the pop-up workbench one of my two tops will be 30 by 60, uh, two and a half feet by, by five feet. And the other top, which I'm also going to laminate together, is a three quarter inch Baltic birch, which is 30 by 48. And then I have the half inch uh, Baltic birch, which is 30 by 48. So that will normally be designed to be a side panel with a lot of match fit dovetail grooves in it. Uh, but it can also be used as an alternative top and in fact it can be used as a second top in other words you could put that on your pop-up uh, workbench and then 
put the uh, bigger one on top of that and that would give you let's see three quarters plus a half one and a quarter that would give you a two and a half inch thick and we're going to do the dog holes in a way that they line up perfectly and then maybe some gramercy uh, hold downs uh, will work in that two and a half inches so that's what we're working on I've got a little uh, spreading device here. Usually I use my hands, but this is an awful lot of stuff. And I'm not going to fool around with the little bottles. I'm just going to go with the big bottle because i got a lot of glue i got to put on here. You could use anything, uh, some temporary sawhorses. You could use the ground, whatever. In other words, you don't have to have a workbench to build a workbench. I just happen to have my workbench all covered here with some protective uh, uh, glue-up pads from Rockler that doesn't cover everything so I've added some wax paper I just don't want to get a lot of glue on my really nice uh, permanent workbench uh, I'm really excited to get this pop-up workbench uh, added and into my workshop so I can uh, set up a real workbench out in the driveway in the nice summer days without moving this uh, 350 400 pound dude so that's what i'm going to do now i'm going to go ahead and get the glue on anticipating when i put the uh, other one on here that things are going to slide around quite a bit so I'm going to put some salt on there. Those are diamond crystals, which uh, act to hold it kind of in place. Not perfectly, but better than sliding all the way around. So let me add the salt. And there's no problem, the salt's not going to hurt any of the glue, it's just going to dissolve. Alright, now we're trying to get the uh, three quarter inch on here. I've uh, marked it for what I want to be the bottom. I think I have, but now there it is. So this is the bottom. Probably want to get it on as close to where you want it as possible. Not going to line it up perfectly, but we can always do some sanding and alignment uh, when we're done. My uh, three quarter inch is ever so slightly bigger. Then my uh, half inch, and that's because the half inch was 30 by 60, and then I had to cut it, and so I have a 1 8 saw curve, and so it is actually 1 8 less. I'm going to run a uh, trim router over that later to make them perfectly the same. You can just sand them. All right, now we're going to get the glue on this one. And uh, I think at that point, I will stop filming. You get the idea. I'm going to spread glue all over this one. I'm going to put the other top on it. Then I'm going to find the head, some heavy items in the workshop and put those on top of all of these. And then tomorrow, I'll be ready to cut some grooves and dig and do some dog holes. So it's getting, we're getting there, getting close to getting that puppy built.